I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to spend a little more time with the master detail or main form subform that we created in the previous video. I'm going to start by adding a column to a table using Object Browser. Then I will use the SQL commands screen inside of SQL Workshop to populate this new column that's been added. I will then add that column as a page item in an Apex form. In the master detail that we created in the previous video, I want to show how you could modify the data source, edit the SQL code, and filter the rows that are shown in the form. We'll also take a brief look at the single row view and edit options in the master detail form. I'm going to log in to the Animal Shelter workspace as the developer, Carlo Mora. So I'm going to go into Application Builder and run the application that is our development application. In the previous video, we created two master detail or main form subforms, uh, and I'm going to take a look here at the side by side. So I can do a search of records, and when I click one of those records, I see to the right the person data, and if there's if that person is an employee, I see the related employee data. So what if I have people in my records that I no longer want to show up? This is something I would have hopefully thought about when I was designing my database. But what I'll do now is go to SQL Workshop and for all persons I want to add a field where we can say active or inactive. So I'm going to select object browser and select persons. Now I do have, I'll just show you quickly, I do have a status field for employees, but I'm going to add one for persons because eventually we might want some of our person records to not show up in reports and lists. 
what we typically do not want is to delete those records. So if somebody you know has uh, moved away or has died, you don't delete the record. You flag it as no longer pertinent, but it stays in the database, especially if that record is tied to other data in other tables. So what I want to do now is I want to add a column, and this will be the purse status, and it will be VARCAR2, which is not shown on the screen, but it's at the top of the list, and I'm going to make the list three. I don't need to fill out the rest of these. I'll click Next and Finish. So I have purse status. If I click on data and look at data, we'll see that purse status is empty. To begin with, if we were adding this to an already existing table with rows, which we are, I would come to SQL Workshop, go to SQL Commands, and I would populate that column. I'm going to do an update, update persons, and I'm going to set purse status equal to, I'm going to set everybody as active, and I'll just use the capital letter A for that. Then I will click run, but let me add, and I think I've said this in a previous video, almost always when you do an update, you want to have a where clause. I happen to want this change to happen in all the rows in the table, but it's often the case that you don't want that. So use where clauses to control the impact of an update command. So I'm going to click run in this case, and notice that we have 121 rows that were updated. If I come back to Object Browser, and I click on Persons, and click on Data, we'll see that A through all the records. I want to take one of these people, I'll take the very first one, Katerina Chavez, and I'm going to change the A to I for inactive. So we'll know when we start to filter on active only that we should have 120, not 121 records. So I will save this information and come back to my form. So in this form, we see all persons. If I edit this page, in the page designer over on the left-hand side, I go to Master Records, and off to the right, I see the SQL query, which is the data source for that list of names you see in the left panel. I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to add and, amp, uh, not amp, purse, purse status is equal to, and when I add single quotes, I'm, I'm testing for data, it is case sensitive. So I'll do a capital A because that's what I put in that field. The name of the column in the SQL code is not case sensitive. So it doesn't have to be an uppercase. I will click on OK. And I will save that and run that. Now you might not remember, but it was Chavez that I switched to inactive. So if I do Sanchez here, we know we have two. We have Teresa, who's also an employee, and we have Yolanda who is not an employee. If I do Chavez, it now tells me no record found. But we know that if we were to come back here and look in the object browser, go to persons, go to data, she's here. She's still in the database. So you might at some point actually want to have a form maybe just for administrators, that shows all persons' records inactive or active. So let's come back and take a look at the report list of persons. Now what do I do 
now that I have that new column, if I edit, and notice, by the way, that Katerina is shown here, but I don't see anything about her status. So I have a form here that I think I want to modify. I'm going to edit this form, so I come down to edit the page. On the left-hand side, we have the items, the page items that are linked to columns in the table persons. If anything goes wrong here, keep in mind how easy it is to simply recreate a form with report using Apex. So if you run into error messages or problems, just try recreating the form and report. But let's go ahead and see if we can add this as a page item and link it to the new field in the person's table. I right click on the left hand side on items and create page item. So down here we see P11 new and I'm going to change that to purse status. Then I need to scroll down and find the data source. And here we are in the source section. This is in the person data region. It is a column in the table and it now shows up as one of the fields in the table. And the data type comes in. So I'm going to save this and I'll run this. And so I now see status. And in fact, if I come back to the report, because right now there's no data, but if I select an existing record like Katerina, then I see that her status is I. If I come back and select someone else, I see the status is A. So let me make a few more quick edits here. I would like per status to come after phone number and before the audit columns, date created and date modified. So I'm going to pick or select on the left hand side phone number and scroll down and see that its sequence is 70. I will select per status on the left hand side and change its sequence to 75 or 72, something that comes immediately after phone number. And I'll save that and we now see that it's right below phone number. So we've done this before. I will select per status and scroll down and say start new row no. And I will save that. Now the one other thing that I really should have here is I should have a list of values. So I'm going to come back to the SQL workshop. No, actually, sorry. I'm going to come back to the application, shared components, list of values, and if I had made the column wide enough, I could actually use the employee status LOV because it's active inactive. But since I didn't do that, I could go change, modify the column, but I'm going to instead simply create another list of values. It'll be static and it will be called list purse status and click next and then type in. Now for the display, I want active. That's what we'll see as a choice, but we will store the letter A. We'll see inactive and we'll store the letter I. And I'll create that list, come back to my form, edit that page item, which is over on the left hand side, purse status. I'll switch that. I'll switch it from, I could do select list, but I think I'll do a radio group just as a review, because we've only done that once before. I want two columns, so the two options are side by side. And I want to tell what list of values to use, and that will be in shared components, and that will be the purse status. Display null value? Uh, no, I'll say no. And I'll save. And now we see that it's displayed as a radio group. If I come back and select an existing record, I see inactive for Katerina. And I see active for anybody else that I happen to select. So let's look at another situation where we can filter based on active inactive. I'm going to select the drill down master detail on the left hand side and I see that I'm getting 50 rows per screen 
And if I scroll through there, that I see that I have 121 records showing right now. So I'm going to edit this page. And the first thing I'm going to do is select attribute on the left hand side and come down. We've done this once before. But what I want to do on pagination is I want to get the scroll option at both the top and the bottom of the page so I don't have to scroll down. And I can simply page through the rows. Having done that, I'm going to select persons. And I see over on the right hand side that this is my source code, the SQL query. I'm going to come in here and do an AND, or wait, not an AND, a WHERE, where purse status is equal to A. So I only want to see people whose status is active. It's important that the A be capitalized. That's how I put the data into the column. The column name does not have to be capitalized. So I will click OK. I will save that, and I will run that. So now I see my navigation, and I'm seeing 120, not 121. So it remembered that I had gone to the end of my display, but now I no longer see Katerina Chavez. I can search on that, and I don't see her. One other thing while I'm here is I have a small screen for recording purposes, but by default we're getting 50 rows on a page. And you can change that by selecting Actions, Format, Rows per Page. And I'm going to pick 20. I still have to scroll, so I will come back on Format, Rows per Page, and I'll select 10. And off the top of my head, I haven't. I need to think about this, but I think this is user specific. So this is set for Carlo Mora now, and it will be remembered, but it won't change the display for use, other users that log into this application. The last thing that I wanted to do here is just quickly show you how the edit works. I'm going to go into one of these records and show that there's an edit option, what we're seeing in the top half, and I would want to change this display. In fact, I will do that, but I won't record it. You should already know how to say start new row, no. Let me change this so that the person's data is more compact and we can see the employee data below it, if there is an employee. So I'll pause the video while I do that. So I have set Randall, the first name, middle name, and last name side by side. I did that with address and zip. And notice we don't have status. I'm not going to add this to this form. I want you to think about whether you want to have all the fields displayed in any given form. I can show certain fields to only people who have administrative rights, and I can have a custom application for that. So I don't have person status listed here. But I did want to show you that you can edit, such as here, if I wanted to make this person an employee, then I could add a row or I could click Edit. This is being treated like an interactive grid. We haven't really talked about that, but I have several videos that I have several videos that cover interactive grid. I can come up here and I can type in into the form itself, editing the data for this particular person. If I come to the side-by-side -side master detail and I click on Teresa, and it remembered that so it's already filtered and selected, if I want to edit Teresa in this format of the master detail, I have to click the edit button in order to do that. And then I get this pop-up form or modal form. If I want to do anything with employee, I don't have the edit option here because this layout right now is defined as classic report, which is not editable. We could change that and we might do that in a later video. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.